Thank you for joining us today in our next Soul to Soul conversation. Our guest today is Cyprian Diaz. We're so excited to have him with us. Um, he is an Akashic Records psychic astrologer, and he's going to be sharing it with us about what those Akashic Records are and how they can help you. And so welcome, Cyprian. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much, Italia. I'm glad to be here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So let's begin with, I always like to, um, just in learning about people and how they kind of evolve to what they've been doing in, in their life. So what is it, like how did you have your spiritual awakening? What was the process like? And how did you become a uh, Akashic Records psychic astrologer? Well, starting when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. I used to come across certain paranormal situations and dreams, mm. saw spirits, felt them, heard them mm. too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what it meant during mm. that time. But then growing up, like in the middle of my teen years, I used to read um, monthly horoscopes, this out of magazines, books, astrology books too. That was the beginning point of my studies in astrology and how I became an astrologer on a professional level. Mm -hmm. Back then when I was reading books and magazines, technology wasn't really that um, advanced yet with the internet. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't that much options of, oh, I could just find this on the internet. I can just look this up. But as I read more, it was just more than my sun sign. Like I'm a Virgo and I'm just not a Virgo. There has to be more than that. So as I studied more about astrology, I realized there was um, nine other planets like the Moon, Mercury, Mars, Venus in each sign as well. But from there, I went to um, college majoring in Comparative Religious Studies and during that time, I had um, instructors from all spiritual backgrounds who talked about the gifts that we have too and they introduced me to spiritual fair events and metaphysical holistic arts too as well and when I went to these things I learned about past life regression how to tap into various types of um, psychic modalities and healing too and I also had a couple of um, friends that were psychic and healers as well Mm -hmm. So they introduced me to some of that. And from there, after I graduated with my Bachelor's of Arts in Comparative Religious Studies, I started going to spiritual organizations like Harmony Grove and Escondido. That's a mediumship organization. And I took classes over there on mediumship, tarot, and other stuff too. Mm -hmm. That was like when I was consuming for a while. And then I realized, oh, okay, we're all gifted. I have some kind of gift that I can help people through. Mm. And then after that, when I went through um, a couple of certifications, such as basic astrology and Akashic Records, I moved back to Orange County, Los Angeles, from the Northern County of San Diego which is where Harmony Grove and these organizations were. And one day Vince, who was the um, program coordinator, now is the general manager, invited me to an annual board meeting to do volunteer readings. And when I um, did, he asked me, do you want to go read at the um, psychic fair? And I said, yes. So my journey to the professional level from my spiritual awakening ended up to be faster than I thought. So. Mm, yeah, it sounds like that. Mm -hmm. And then what led you into uh, the Akashic Records and learning about that and now sharing that with other people? So what led you to that? Well, back then when I was pursuing my studies in the Northern County of San Diego, besides Harmony Road, there was Kindred Journeys and Philosophical so philosophical library where I volunteered at and did um, other spiritual work at as well. 
and I look at the calendar because my spiritual mentor specialized in the Akashic Records at the time and then I saw on um, the schedule of Kinder Journeys that there was a five week certification series on, on Akashic Records and I was like, um, hmm. I didn't fully know at the time exactly what the Akashic Records was, so I decided to um, give it a go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I did, I just learned so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for those viewers who are watching who might not know what the Akashic Records are, um, can you define it for them? What are the Akashic Records? Well, the Akashic Records is called the Library of the Soul. Mm -hmm. or um, the spirit of DNA mm -hmm. or DNA of spirit but in um, Christian worldview it can be called the book of life so it's basically the records of your um, soul's experience throughout time and space it's not just past life it's like your potentials for the future mm. and where your soul's been not in this dimension but in other planetary dimensions as well and it's not just information you receive it's healing you receive through that information mm. so if you have a lot of baggage and a lot of clearing to do that's holding you back from moving forward then you take anything out of your records take it to the present and you use that to heal whatever you have when it comes to blockages or baggages. Mm -hmm. But also one of the most common things in the Akashic Records is contracts with people that you don't get along with in life or that you're having a hard time moving forward with. Mm, okay. It could be romantic relationships, but it's not just that. It's like any type of relationships with um, a family member or a colleague, mm -hmm. professional, educational. Mm -hmm. So what is it you would say that people might not know about the Akashic Records and how it could help them? So is that one of the ways that the Akashic Records, accessing the Akashic Records can really help somebody like through their past lives, with healing? Could you talk more about that? Yes. Yeah. In the um, metaphysical and spiritual community, mm -hmm. I noticed that people are a lot more familiar with past lives and mm -hmm. A lot of them don't realize that past lives are just part of the Akashic Records mm. because um, you know it's a library of the soul. It's not just like a past, it's like the um, future, the present. Mm. So time and space, not just like this dimension, but then you know other dimensions beyond this galaxy. Mm -hmm. But one of the main things when it comes to helping others tap into their own records mm -hmm. is meditation. It's really a basic and common modality which is not supposed to be easy mm -hmm. in the spiritual community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you're not really really hypnotizing yourself you're really um that's the um, starting point in order to really really authentically tap into your own records mm. and it happens over time it's not just the goal it's the process i see so what is something that our audience, like our viewers who are listening to you, and they want to access the Akashic Records? What's one simple thing that they can start with today? Of course, meditation. Mm -hmm. That's the most common form of how to access your Akashic Records. Because when we meditate, we're listening to the Divine Source. Mm -hmm. And in the process of meditation, we ground clear, protect, and then open so we can authentically tap into the information that we receive. Mm. And then we do a prayer. It's like we're talking to the higher source, which is the gatekeeper in permission to open the Akashic Records. Is there like a sample prayer maybe you could share with the viewers? Is there something or I mean, I know that um, it will have to be coming from the words of the person themselves, but yes. is there something that you say to access the Akashic Records that you could share? Just a simple prayer. It's okay. like I want to thank the Ascended Masters, Archangels, mm -hmm. spiritual beings, earth spirits, 
extraterrestrial guides, any being who is guiding you, and that we ask permission and a request <clears throat> to give us the information that we are ready to receive. So we should say blessings and amen. Mm -hmm. And that now the records are open. So in the prayer, us um, practitioners will know when permission is granted to open the records. Mm -hmm. And once this um, permission is granted to open the records, what will, what could possibly, I guess, happen to the person when they open those those records? Well, they can start seeing things, feeling things, hearing things, because in the Akashic records, we're not only tapping into our past experiences or one's past experiences, we're also tapping into every emotion, thought, and feeling. Mm -hmm. So they might have like our different senses sort of ignited or activated um, when they enter the Akashic records, yes. perhaps? For instance, in a past life, when they experience like a past life situation, it's not just about, oh, what am I wearing? What is my environment like? But it could be, how am I feeling at the time? What bodily sensations are coming to the forefront? Like, do I have a broken foot? Like, what am I thinking? What am I dreaming? And where is my soul at that level too? So it could be geared towards astral traveling experiences or where the soul has been, not just in the physical form, but like anywhere in the spirit world. And so when you brought up healing before, how we could use the Akashic Records for healing, could that past life then bring up healing for somebody? Like something that they need to work through? Yes. Okay. Like if you tap into a past life experience in the Akashic Records, one of the first steps that can be really difficult for clientele is reliving traumatic past life situations that is connected to any blockages or situations that they are facing today. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the first step. And usually they're not going to really go deep the first time. That's like a start to really, really experience some trauma and then hold back and shut it off. So that's why I say it's not a goal. It's a process. Mm -hmm. So perhaps the clientele would have to schedule another second session mm -hmm. or a third or even practice by themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, going into that, what kind of uh, services do you offer um, in regards to the Akashic Records and beyond that? In my private reading sessions, I also um, offer astrology services, not just needle chart readings, but progressions, re solar returns, Saturn returns, synastry and composite charts, which has to do with relationships, mm. <clears throat> and many others too. And there are times when you can find me accessing a client tells Akashic Records by looking at their needle chart. Mm, okay, so those kind of can go together then, accessing the um, Akashic Records through the needle charts, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's exciting. And then that would bring in, um, it could have bring in, you talked about past lives and future lives and all of that. Is there like potentials within the Akashic Records there? Yes, there are. That's why it's called possibilities for the future when referring to like the future. Because mm -hmm. in this work, it's not fortune telling. It's not just really about fate. It's about free will mm -hmm. and how you can manifest your own reality mm -hmm. on your path. And that's part of how you can reach the ascension levels mm -hmm. and spiritually grow further. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in the process, we could spiritually reawaken through phases. Mm. Okay. So in accessing the Akashic Records, you'd say it's one way to help with the whole ascension process, right? And raising our vibration and all of that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, great. Well, 
Thank you so much, Cyprian. I really appreciate you sharing about the Akashic Records and how they can help people. Now, if somebody wants to find you, um, how would they go about finding you um, if they are interested in your services? Well, I have an email. You could reach me at cyp underscore diaz at yahoo.com. So sip underscore diaz at yahoo.com. I'm still in the beginning phases of working on my website. So when you do stay in touch, my website will um, come out and I'll keep you posted. And I also do work at the Learning Light Foundation in Anaheim. Um, part of the board of directors over there, I read at the Ferris, the Reader Studio, and I facilitate some workshops over there as well. Mm -hmm. And you recently just did our, the certification class for the Akashic Records. So you also offer that as well. Yes. My, the first time I facilitated it was a month ago. It was a five-week series, yes. And the turnout was um, pretty large because the past two years, people ha have been requesting when I'm going to teach. Mm -hmm. and facilitate the um, certification program. So it took me a while, but divine timing has its way to establish the right time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much today for sharing about the Akashic Records, how someone could go about accessing them, what the Akashic Records are, and how they can um, help someone too. So we really appreciate that. So. Thank you so much, and thank you, viewer. Thank you for joining us today in our Soul to Soul conversation. I hope you learned a little bit more about the Akashic Records and how they can help you. Until next time, take care. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Blessings. Mm -hmm.